In this video, we'll learn of two concepts called the equality of two matrices and a second very important concept called the trace of a matrix and the properties associated with trace of a matrix. But before we go to trace of a matrix, let's look at the equality of two matrices. So if you have two matrices, one is M cross N, let's say the other also has to be M cross N, right? The order of these matrices should match if you want to decide if A is equal to B, right? For A to be equal to B, first of all, the orders have to match. The number of rows should match, the number of columns should match. And, and additionally, in addition to the number of rows and columns matching, every element A, I, J, right? Every element in this matrix should exactly match B, I, J. For all, so this is the short form to write for all, right? For all I and J, okay? Only then we say that A equals to B. So A equals to B if the if the order of the matrices are same if the orders are same right and each of the cells each of the cells or each of the values in the matrix of a is same as as the as the as the as the similar so aij should be equal to bij right the corresponding elements in matrix b also should be same as the corresponding elements in matrix a okay very simple concept okay but i just wanted to cover it here for completeness now let's learn of a more interesting concept called as trace because equality is a simple concept. So if you're given any matrix, right? If you're given any square matrix, right? If you're given any square matrix, the trace of the matrix, the trace of the matrix intuitively thinking is nothing but it is the sum of, it is the sum of the diagonal elements. It is the sum of all the diagonal elements of the matrix itself, right? So it's often written as TR of A. Okay, trace of A is summation over I equals to 1 to N. Right, it's a summation over, assuming that A is an N cross N matrix. Right, it's a summation from I equals to 1 to N. A, I, I. Right, so all the diagonal elements. For example, uh, let's take a simple example. Imagine I have a matrix like this, which is minus 1, 0, 3, 11, 5, and 2. And let's say 6, 12 and minus 5. What is the trace of this whole matrix now? The trace of this matrix, okay, written as TR. The trace of the matrix is sum of these main diagonal or principal diagonal elements, okay, which is minus 1, plus 5, minus 5, which is equal to minus 1. Very simple example, just wanted to show that. Again, there is actually a geometric interpretation. There is a geometric interpretation of trace, but... Uh, that interpretation is connected to the geometric interpretation of eigenvalues, right? So anyway, we will learn about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? We will learn about eigenvalues and eigenvectors little later in this course. And once we learn eigenvalues, the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which is a very, very important, interesting concept in the whole of linear algebra, we would be able to understand the geometric interpretation of what trace is. Right now, we cannot because we don't know what an eigenvalue and eigenvector are. And what they mean geometrically okay so we'll keep this on hold right we will keep this on hold we will understand this after we have understood the geometric interpretation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors right the next important thing is let's look at a few bunch of properties of trace again properties of trace are very simple to to absorb right for example trace of a plus b okay is nothing but trace of a plus trace of b very simple right Imagine you have two matrices A and B. The sum of the diagonal elements of A plus B will be the sum of diagonal elements of A plus the sum of diagonal elements of B. Again, this is very trivial to prove numerically. Okay, this is trivial to prove even numerically, right? So, hence I am not proving it here. It's 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 almost commonsensical. Similarly, uh, we have trace of some constant multiplied by matrix A is equal to the constant multiplied by trace of A. That's because this constant will multiply each of the elements of matrix A, including the diagonal elements, right? That's why that's why this this equation also holds true, right? Some of these are very very straightforward and simple. Now here are some interesting stuff: trace of B into A, right? Or or let's put it this way: instead of writing it as B into A, right? Let's write it as trace of A into B. Okay, trace of A into B is same as trace of B into A. Okay, as long as AB and BA both are defined. 
okay as long as both see if you cannot multiply a and b then there is no point in computing its trace but if a b and b a both are defined then the trace of matrix a b is same as the trace of matrix b a and again you can argue this very easily by looking at all the diagonal elements look at this what will be the diagonal elements of a b okay suppose let's assume a b equals to c right if you look at the matrix c let's assume a is 3 cross 3 b is 3 cross 3 let's look at these diagonal elements how would you obtain these diagonal elements you can obtain this diagonal element by taking the first row of a multiplying with the first column of b okay how do you obtain this you 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 perform the dot product right you perform the dot product of the first the second row of a with the second column of b okay i'm just writing the same i'm just writing it in a simplified notation here right how do you obtain this this is the third row of a multiplied with the third column of b okay similarly when you perform b dot a what happens let's assume b dot a equals to d let's just say okay what will these three diagonal elements be this diagonal element will be the first look at this b dot a right right look at this b dot a so when you're multiplying b with a right it's the first row of b and the first column of a right so on so forth so you can actually prove very easily very logically you can prove the trace of a into b is trace of b into a and this proof is very straightforward even if you perform it numerically you can actually take numerical examples where a is a11 a12 a13 right a21 a22 a23 right you can actually take this simple numerical example you can actually take these as variables take a 3 cross 3 matrix for a and b and you can actually verify it numerically it's very very straightforward okay so this is the third property now let's uh, there is also a third there is also a related property related to this which is trace of a transpose b if you have two matrices a and b such that you can multiply a transpose b and let's assume all these are valid okay all these are valid multiplications okay if all these are valid multiplications if all these are valid multiplications you can prove very easily again numerically you can prove because we don't yet have a geometric interpretation handy so the easiest way to prove many of these especially the especially to trace because for the case of trace you only care about these three elements the di the principal diagonal elements that's all you care about hence even proving some of these things numerically is very straightforward it just requires patience okay because you have to look at each of the terms that will that we will get okay so trace of a transpose b is same as trace of ab transpose which is same as trace of b into a transpose which is same as trace of b into yeah which is same as b in the trace of b into a transpose yes okay so as long as see remember for all of this a transpose b ab transpose and ba transpose should be valid if they are all valid there is one more that i have forgotten here uh, that's it that's it a transpose b ab transpose ba transpose yes okay if all of them are valid if all of these things are valid then these traces also will be the same okay now there is something called as a cyclic property the next very interesting property is called the cyclic property of traces okay it's called cyclic property what it says is this it says trace of a b c d okay if you have four matrices a b c d okay if this matrix multiplication is valid then the trace of a b c d is same as trace of if you move cyclically so here we are starting with a right if i start with b and if i come cyclically what will i get i'll get b followed by c followed by d and then if i go cyclically i'll get a right so it's so the, the cyclic property of trace says that trace of a b c d is same as trace of b c d a which is same as again now trace of start with c now c d a b okay as long as all these multiplications are valid you can again numerically show that the trace of all of them is d a b c okay you're going cyclically here you're cyclically permutating this okay this is called the cyclic property of of uh, of trace okay very interesting property now let's look at another property it says if a b and c okay this is one property the other property is if a b c are symmetric matrices right if a b c are symmetric matrices then then trace of a b c sorry trace of a b c then the trace of a b c is equal to trace of any combination so here we don't have to just go cyclically 
as long as this multiplication is valid this is equal to trace of cba here i'm just changing the order in any way so as long as cba and abc are valid the trace if i remember again that abc are symmetric matrices here okay they are symmetric matrices then trace of abc equals to trace of cba which is equal to trace of acb okay remember that we are not cyclically permitting this we are permitting this whichever way we want okay this is a very very nice property again very very important property that lot of people make a mistake is trace of ab is not equal to trace of a into trace of b okay this is a very very common mistake that lot of beginner students make this is not equal that's why i'm calling it out okay this is this is a common mistake this is a common mistake that people make so trace of ab is not equal to trace a trace b again you can verify this numerically very very easily okay this is a very very i i let me put a star mark here to state that this is a common mistake that lot of people make okay i want you to avoid making that mistake similarly let's take an another interesting property which is trace of if you have three matrices okay p inverse pa assuming that this is valid this is a valid multiplication the trace of p transpose ap can be written as trace of p inverse multiplied by ap i can write it this way okay i can write it this way right now i can write it as see trace of a into b look at this we have seen right trace of ab is same as trace of ba i can change this order from ab to ba and it will still work right so i can write this if this is my a and this is b i can change the order right remember trace of ab is not equal to trace of a into trace of b but this is equal to trace of ba okay so i'm using this property the trace of ab equals to trace of ba to write this as ap multiplied by p inverse okay now if you notice p and p inverse if i multiply p with p inverse it becomes identity matrix right and anything multiplied with identity matrix is the matrix itself right so this is a very very useful property trace of this multiplication p inverse ap is same as trace of a again using very simple principles here the only principle that i used here is that trace of ab is equal to trace of ba this is the only property that i have used and i have gotten this okay now there is another very interesting property which is if a is a symmetric matrix let's assume a is a symmetric matrix right and b is a skew symmetric matrix okay b is a skew symmetric matrix we know the definitions of symmetric and skew symmetric right we have discussed them multiple times then the trace of a into b is going to be equal to 0 this is another very useful property when you are solving problems or even even when you have to this property is very important as far as the product of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix are concerned right so if a is symmetric and b is skew symmetric the trace of a into b is going to be equal to 0 okay unfortunately for the concept of trace i am not able to give you geometric interpretations most of these things because we have to understand the concepts of eigen values and eigen vectors for it but most of these statements most of these properties that i have listed here are very very easy to prove numerically you can just take matrices like this and you can actually work it out it requires patience okay it takes it takes time to prove it numerically it requires patience and it takes time to prove it numerically but nonetheless all of these statements that i have written here are fairly straightforward if you have patience and if you do it step by step carefully you can prove all of them okay so so that's what that's what a trace is and we have also seen the equality of matrices now we'll see how all these concepts fit in in the next few videos